Okay, so you may be wondering why I'm doing a list of only she cats. And the simple answer to that is that I'll be doing a tomcat list later. Top 10 she cats and top 10 tomcats sounded much more fun than top 20 cats parts 1 and 2. So let's go. Number 10, Briarlight. With Briarlight, I really appreciate her heart and all the kindness that Jupiter and Leafpool showed to her as she pushed through self-doubt. Overall, just very good disability representation, and a nice way of showing the readers the importance of love, and how there is more to self-worth than achievement. Her death did feel like it was a bit too soon, but it was devastating, and that can be attributed to the fact that she was such a sweet cat all the way through. Number 9. Mothwing I've made two videos on Mothwing, and for good reason. I just love that she's a cat all about standing up for what you believe in. Her disbelief in Star Clan, while something I was confused about at first, ended up being something that was a much needed point of view. She exposed a bit of the flaws in clan culture while also opening the door to the idea that cats could have differences in their beliefs and in their backgrounds. She shows us the importance of diversity with her unique viewpoints. Number 8, Bristlefrost. I love the broken code, so of course I had to put Bristlefrost here. Her Stemleaf romance plot was not the best, especially now that Stemleaf is dead and we didn't see her show much emotion. But aside from that, I do really like her. I wasn't sure of her purpose at first, but her awkward role as the imposter's deputy made for some good drama and a few sticky situations that kept me on the edge of my seat. Her relationship with Rootspring may not be very well executed, but I can 100% see why Rootspring fell for her. She is fierce, she is brave, and she is quick to act when there is trouble. While I rank her at 8 for now, I could easily see myself ranking her higher in the future, and all that depends on what comes next in the Broken Code. Number 7, Hollyleaf. I rank Hollyleaf this high recognizing that there are still several flaws with her character. I wasn't really a huge fan of her warrior code obsession, there just wasn't enough to back it up, and honestly she was kind of a boring character for the first 5 books of Power of Three. But I can't help but forgive most of that, because all the drama she caused later on. Sunset could have been executed a little better. I think the reveal that she killed Ashford should have happened a bit sooner so we could have seen a full downward spiral rather than just a quick escalation. But all this criticism aside, I do like that she makes things exciting. She is the only main series protagonist to turn bad, and I'm thankful we got to see that. And the other thing I like about her is her return from being trapped in the tunnels. There was a certain level of hype that came with the return of a character who was thought to be dead, and it was a perfect launching point for the novellas. Number 6. Needletail I do think it was a breath of fresh air to have a cat as rebellious as Needletail. The rejection she feels when she is younger drives her into an objectively worse group in Darktail's kin, but she likes it better just in being recognized as an individual there. Needletail has a big ego to start with, and what I like most about her is how between Alderheart and Violetpaw, she is able to slowly get a better grip on herself and find what it means to show love and care before ultimately sacrificing her life the way she does. It's well agreed upon that the first half of Vision of Shadows are better than the back half, and I feel Needletail is a big contributor to that. A lot of warrior characters stagnate at one point or another, but Needletail kept her fiery passion burning all the way through those three books. Number 5. Twig Branch Twig Branch is the heart and soul of the Vision of Shadows story arc, in my opinion. While Violet Shine lost a lot of her relevance after Darktail, and Alderheart lost a lot of his development after the first book. Twig Branch was the only cat here that I felt actively contributed to the plot and developed as a cat all the way through. Plus, she's just super cute. Some of my favorite moments for her were her wanting to gift a little red feather to her sister, and her wholesome little friendship with Finleap. You know, before book 6. But even in book 6, I do admire her standing up for herself and her decision to not want kits. Also, she has her fair share of heroic moments with her going out on her own to bring Sky Clan back, and her running into fire to help out River Clan. Overall, I just felt like she had the most complete story arc out of the Vision of Shadows protagonist. Number 4, Ivypool. Ivypool is cool, what can I say? 
For a book series where 90% of the characters are trained to fight, it's a shame we don't have more female cats who are known for their ability to kick some tail. It took Dark Forest training for us to finally get a good one in Ivy Pool. What I like about her is that she goes from a selfish brat who can't handle Dovepaw getting attention to a strong and confident fighter who makes the most out of her position and skill to make herself useful. And having the Dark Forest perspective is honestly just super interesting. Omen of the Stars wouldn't be the same without Ivy Pool. Number 3. Leaf Pool. It's only fitting that I put the first female protagonist on the list of the top 10 she cats. Her chapters were definitely not as interesting as the questing cats when things started off, but over time I really grew to like her. The Crowfeather romance plot and their conflict with Cinderpelt were easily the most dramatic parts of the new prophecy, and in Power of Three she works really well to counteract Jayfeather's attitude. I also feel like the relationship she had with Squirrelflight was super genuine, especially so in Squirrelflight's hope. And she also had a nice connection to Mothwang. Through all her struggles, she definitely stands for what she believes in. I like that she can assert herself without being overly brash or inconsiderate. Number 2. Dovewang Yes, I'm taking the stance that Dovewang is better than her sister Ivy Pool. Ivy Pool is great too, but I just feel there are a few reasons that Dove edges her out. I just felt that Dovewing was much more honest and in touch with her emotions. I don't blame her for getting upset over her powers, because Omen of the Stars is setting up a doomsday scenario and no one is going to be able to relax in such a situation. Overall, her struggle felt a bit more genuine than Ivy, because you could tell she was trying her very hardest to be brave in a troubling situation while Ivy Pool was acting more out of spite when it came to her ambitions. I thought the fourth apprentice was a good start for her, doing her best to build up a level of authority for herself, and the authors did a good job of keeping her from being too overpowered while still giving her moments of value, whether that be with finding water, hearing the tree falling, hearing the Wind Clan cats in the tunnels, or alerting the clans of the Dark Forest attack. Also, I was never too bothered by the Tiger Heart romance. There was a level of escapism there that definitely played a role in keeping the both of them sane, and I just felt they were a good match for each other, like they inspire each other to make good decisions. Also, Devwing is a great mom to Shadow Sight. Their interactions are always so heartwarming. Now, before I reveal my number one pick, I want to recognize both Tawny Pelt and Violet Shine as honorable mentions. While they're not my favorites, they do both have their fair share of admirable traits. Tawny Pelt is just so spunky. It's super cool how she stayed committed to Shadow Clan despite her attempt to bond with her father going terribly wrong. I wish she could have been leader. And Violet Shine. She played such a great role in the Dark Tale plot. Things were very exciting and high stakes, and I loved watching her fight through it. I only consider them number 11 and 12, but both of these cats are awesome. Now moving on to my number one pick. Number 1. Squirrel Flight It's no secret that I am very interested in Squirrel Flight. I have over 45 minutes of Squirrel Flight analysis on my channel, and I've even written a Squirrel Flight song. So why am I such a big fan of her? Well, simple. She is the most complex character in the entire series. The only cat that I think comes close will be the cat that you will see at the top of my top 10 Tomcats list. Anyway, I see Squirrel Flight as three characters in one, just because she goes through such drastic development. We have the young, hot-headed Squirrel Flight of the New Prophecy, the calm, caring Squirrel Flight of Power of Three through A Vision of Shadows, and the frustrated yet determined Squirrel Flight of her Super Edition and the Broken Code. Other former protagonists such as Firestar often burn out after their main point of importance and seemingly abandon their heroic nature but Squirrel Flight finds a way to stay relevant arc after arc. And what it boils down to is that you can find a little Squirrel Flight in every situation, whether it be curiosity, love, rejection, growing old, or any range of emotion. I feel like she perfectly encapsulates the human struggle, if that makes sense. Her passion is something that I will never get tired of. I'm really looking forward to seeing her become the focus in the upcoming Broken Code books. All right. That concludes my list. Let me know what you think in the comments, and bye everyone!